Good evening, everyone. Time to get back in God's Word just a few minutes. And I want to thank you all for joining me. And this time we're going to be reading from the 25th chapter of St. Matthew. In the King James Version Bible. And if you have your Bibles, turn, turn, open your Bibles and read along with me. In case I mispronounce words, and sometimes I do. Our most kind of gracious Heavenly Father, if we come to you again one more time, Lord, and get in your word, to learn more about you, Lord, and about your city, and about your great love that you had for man, I pray, Lord, you anoint these lips of clay, and help me, Lord, explain them to the understanding that we'll all grow closer to you and know how much you love us and how much we need you. Now I pray, O oh Lord, you fill every listener with your Holy Spirit, that they can feel your presence all over them, run up and down the avenues of their soul as they all look into your word and try to draw closer to you. These things we ask in the lovely name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And thank you, Father. Now, I'm going to start reading chapter 25 and verse 31. People talk like they know so many things. And we live in the day and time. When they think if you don't have a high grade education or a college degree, you can't teach God's Word or you can't preach God's Word. But those that God calls, He qualifies. He gives them what they need. And they don't have to get it from a high school or a college. But it comes straight from Him. And he's the one I lean on. He's the one I trust. And he has never let me down yet. Twenty-five and verse thirty-one. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. 32, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. The sheep are his children, born again, washing his blood, children but the goats the goats are those that don't know him or that never accepted him that wouldn't heed the call when he bade them to come to him and be saved and he shall set the sheep on his right hand but the goats on the left let us all examine ourselves daily and see if we are one of the sheep or one of the goats. The Spirit will reveal it to us. We know we have been saved by the grace of God. No one else can tell us, but we can know in our own heart, our own selves, that we are one of His sheep. Thirty-four, then shall the king say unto them, On his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you From the foundation of the world. Think about that. That he loved his creation. He loved his children enough. 
that place was prepared for us from the foundations of the world. So how can we ever praise God and thank God enough for giving His Son and for His Son to go into Calvary, go into the cross, dying for our sins, that we could be forgiven and be saved and have an eternal everlasting home in heaven with Him where no one will ever grow old or ever say goodbye to a loved one anymore. There will be no pain, there will be no suffering, there will be no sorrow or anything in that city. But the joy that will last forevermore in the presence of our King, our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, and those gone on before us that made it home. If that's not worth living for God for, tell me if you can what is. Verse 35, For I was in hunger, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. How many can say today they have done this? I've tried to help people. I've tried to feed people. But we live in the day and time. People don't care anymore. Even the churches, they don't care for those going hungry anymore. They don't care about those that can't pay their heat bill. They don't care about those that shut in and can't hardly help themselves. So where is the love at? The love is supposed to be in the Christians, the, those that gather in the church houses. I'm not saying this to put down church houses, but I'm saying it. Their love must be for the members, for each other as a family. And as a spiritual family, the children of God and brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Verse 36. Naked and ye clothed me. I was sick and ye visited me. I was in prison and ye came unto me. 37. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? Now remember he said, the righteous, even the saved ones, the redeemed ones, have forgotten what it means to reach out to each other. That's why so many churches are so cold today. They, many of them have left their first love. It's time they got back to the altar. All of us go to the altar often and thank God and pray and give Him glory and praise for saving us and ask Him to help us not to forget what He has done for us and to let our love show forth to those around us. That they try to talk to people, bring them in, but they don't show them the right love when they get there. Many of them, they would judge and condemn. Still not speaking to them with a loving heart and praying for them. And we don't have to tell anyone how bad a sinner they are because they already know it, or they wouldn't be seeking to be saved. The Spirit is already dealing with them. It's to them, and let them know how much God loved them, and how that He would forgive them as He forgave us. If we, people would do that, then they could see sons and daughters born into the kingdom when they gather to worship God. 
because they will be worshiping him in spirit and in truth, not just from the words of their mouth. 38. When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed me? 39. Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? They didn't realize. Somebody took in a bag of groceries. He come in with them. They don't realize he that helped someone pay of their electric bill so they can stay warm in the winter or cool in the summer that we're suffering. They don't realize the love of God was the one that sent that to them. Whoever took it was just a messenger, a delivery person from God to them. How many will come to your door and ask us that knows us as a member of the church if we need anything or if they can help us? Very few, my friends. But yet they'll come across that they're the best Christians they are. I'm not saying this to judge. I'm saying this according to God's word. Are they keeping his commandments as he asked them? If they're not, how are they loving him like they should? He said, if we can't love a brother whom we have seen, how can we love God whom we have not seen? Verse 40, And the King, it's King Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, and the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, in, in as much as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. If they turn their back on those that are need, in need, they're turning their back on God because they're part of Him. He saved them and they were grafted in to Him. Therefore, they're turning their back on God. And God will not be pleased with somebody that turned their back on God's children. No matter how fancy a church may get on inside. It's what's in the heart of the born-again people that really make up the church. And if they don't do according to God's word what he asks us, then they're just making a big speech with wasting words with no meaning because the love ain't there as it should be. 41, then shall he say also unto them on the left hand. Now this is the one that would have been lost. That's standing in judgment. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. He's telling us in this chapter what good, the good it's the saved are going to reap one day at the end of their journey. He's also telling the lost, those that deny him, those that fail to accept him, when they're being judged on that great judgment day. Forty two, for I was in hungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked and ye clothed me not. Sick in prison and ye visit me not. Then shall they say also, 
Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked and sick in, the, in prison, and did not minister unto them? This also speaketh to the many in the churches that said they loved the Lord. <coughs> Excuse me. But they turned away the needy, turned their back on those in need. Therefore, they weren't following God's love. And they're the same as the goats that are on our left, because he spoke to them as being goats on his left. <coughs> then shall he answer, 45, Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. How many is it taking this word serious? How many are gathering every Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday morning, or Wednesday night, that are doing these things. For when they go, they when they get up there, when they make this, all these uh, testimonies, all these things of how good they are, it won't be heard. If they've not done to the Lord's children as he asked them to do. If they have turned his children away from helping them. Then all they're talking is vain. It's no good. It's empty. Because there weren't no truth in it. They were going to be seen and bragged on by man of how good they are. It's time that people waked up to the fact that Jesus is in control. He knows those that are his and those that are not. He said, I know my sheep and I am known of mine. And they follow me. And he says they know not the voice of a stranger. And he they will not follow. If we are not following God. Then we have to be following the stranger. That knows not God. So they all, we all need to be annoying. We are following God. Following Jesus Christ, our Savior, as he asked us to. Not to please ourselves, but to help those in need and let God's light shine through us to, to those. Be a good witness and let our good deeds back up our witness, back up our testimonies that we share with each other when we gather together. Or it won't be worth anything but blowing the hot air when we're there. So and every one of us, they, they ain't a man of been saved or born again that don't need a closer walk with the Lord and look into God's word who they're really following and take inventory of themselves. And then we start taking inventory of our own selves. Then you'll see others in a different light. We'll be reaching out to them. We'll be helping them. But most of all, we'll be praying for them when we're not in their presence. 
You don't have to be in presence of a person to pray for them and lift them up to God in prayer. If we can't pray for those we do not see, it won't help us none to pray for those we do see. Because we're all created by God. We're all God's children. We're not all saved, but we're all God's children. And He loves one just as much as He loves the other. So we must love each other as He has loved us. Our most kind, gracious Heavenly Father, it's again we come to you, Lord, to thank you one more time for these words you have given us to speak. And I pray, O oh Lord, that each one that hears this video, and myself included, will honor and heed your word and follow your word to the best of our ability. Help us to reach out to those around us that are in need, that needs help, and let's lift them up before you, Lord, in prayer. And Lord, I pray, O oh Lord, if there's anyone lost, listen to this video. This would be a great day for them to be, be saved because it said every day is a day of salvation. We pray for those that are sick and afflicted in body that you reach down, heal, deliver, and set free because, Lord, you are the great healer. No matter what anybody says, Lord, you're stronger than any doctor ever was. And you can reach down and heal the ones that the doctors can't even touch and know what's wrong with them. Lord, most of all, you can save a sin-sick soul. And, Lord, a sin-sick soul is worse than any disease there is. Because, Lord, we can die and go, go to heaven if we have a disease or anything wrong with us. It's not cured. But we cannot die lost and go to heaven without you. And I pray, O oh Lord, today you reach down and touch each one. Let your spirit run rapid up and down through the bloodstreams of their soul and body to the cup overflowed, that we all know we're resting securely in your hands. And when it comes time for us to go and you call us away, we can lay down our old cross and go home and be with you forevermore, where we can dwell with you in your kingdom and give you the praise and honor and glory that we're not able to give today. These things we ask in a lovely and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And thank you, Father, one more time for your love and for your great mercy.